Four solar flares simultaneously erupt from the sun in rare super explosion, and Earth could be hit by the fallout. The sun put on quite the show this morning, April 23rd, blasting out not one, not two, but four solar flares in near-perfect harmony. And NASA's Space-Based Solar Dynamics Observatory, SDO, caught it on camera. Solar flares are explosions from the sun's surface that emit intense bursts of electromagnetic radiation. They occur when magnetic energy builds up in the solar atmosphere and is rapidly released. The quartet of eruptions came from four regions, three sunspots and one magnetic filament, separated by hundreds of thousands of miles and linked by near-invisible magnetic loops in the sun's outer atmosphere, known as the corona. These kinds of explosions are called sympathetic solar flares, according to SpaceWeb.com. They consist of pairs of explosions that occur in near unison at different regions on the sun's disk. This morning's event consisted of not a simple pair but a quartet, making it super sympathetic, according to SpaceWeather.com. Earth Alliance Space Weather Intel Global Ascension Symptoms Great One Are you feeling this energy? Space weather has been exceptionally active this weekend. Earth has experienced a series of nine powerful M flares over the last 24 hours, and much of this energy is currently impacting Earth. In addition to this weekend's solar energy, there has been a significant amount of cosmic light showing on the Schumann resonance graph, with some of the spikes peaking at the 40 Hz level, which resonates with the fifth dimension. Reports of strong ascension symptoms are coming in from around the world following this powerful barrage of cosmic light. These powerful waves of high vibrational light Streaming in from the galactic core, contain tiny packets of advanced information and are traveling at millions of miles per hour. It can be quite jarring when they impact the human body, as nano-sized, ionized particles rip right through the human genome, recoding DNA to a much higher order. Earth Alliance leaders from all around the globe report that the main symptoms being experienced are migraine headaches, accelerated dehydration, feeling disoriented, intense fatigue, inability to focus, with difficulties, and vivid dreams. These ascension symptoms are the result of the natural DNA activation process that is occurring in this cosmos. To alleviate the effects of this intense light, it is recommended to consume natural energy foods and drink plenty of pure water. Engaging in breathwork, meditating for an hour, and spending time in nature will ground you. Keeping crystals near your auric field can assist in channeling this powerful light into the earth. Your body is undergoing a superplanetary DNA upgrade, and after some REM sleep tonight, this light will fully integrate into your cells. You will then awaken as a brand new being with new levels of strength, intelligence, and ability. The star seeds of Earth have become masters at taking light into the human body and storing it in the cells. This was the prime mission for coming to Earth, to be a receptacle for this light and anchor it to the Earth. Steadily increasing the vibration of this entire realm, you are doing this on behalf of all humanity, to hold the light for them until they can hold it for themselves. Hang in there and don't forget to breathe. Let us know what ascension symptoms you are currently experiencing. Godspeed. Michael and the Pleiadians. In freedom is the real. Before destruction the heart of man is haughty. And before honor is humility. Prov. 1812. When we try to become virtuous so that we may ensure a place in heaven, we are led away from the ever-present reality which is within us. In our seeking we pause when we think we have found the truth but this only lasts a short time, and the hunt begins again with renewed effort along the path of illusion, because we fail to understand ourselves. Book after book we explore and digest in the hunt for the truth, so the mind becomes more and more confused. Only by understanding that which is not truth will a book be of value, if we are merely looking for confirmation of our own conditioning. We will be caught up in ideas and beliefs which is not the truth of the ever-present living presence. Most people are slaves to tradition and thought and religion with the result that they are still perpetuating the past which is preventing the realization of the living presence. Most people say they believe in God, but the world has not benefited by this belief, for are we not still fighting because of our ignorance of the living presence being the only reality which is now? Division in man is the result of this ignorance, we have the rich and the poor, the high and the low, the educated and the uneducated. Our social structure is built upon master and servant, the high class, the middle class, the low class and so on. These divisions are the result of this ignorance, they are based upon material values which set man against man. 
Our social system breeds endless opposition and antagonism and there can be no end to the conflict until our thought feeling frees itself from this conditioning by understanding the cause of this separation. Only then will we realize our fundamental unity. We try to grasp reality at the same time we build up in our minds a competitive aggressive attitude for achievement. We are hypocritically righteous, and by our prayers we strive for reward in heaven while we live in separation. We think by constant abiding by the rules of some organized religion it is possible to reach this heaven we have built up in our minds as being the finality of a virtuous life. While all the time we maintain this constant division between man and man. How ignorant still is the mind of man. The old are those who want to settle back, they want security in their souls, in their work. They want certainty in ideas, in relationship, in things. The young are those who have the spirit of inquiry which makes them want to know the truth of anything, of any political action, left or right, of any religion, east or west. But if we are bound by tradition or by what another says we will never be generators of a new world or creators of a new civilization expressing the truth of a living presence. What is essential for old and young alike is to live fully and completely. And to live fully and completely there must be freedom which is not the acceptance of any authority. There can be freedom only when there is virtue. But virtue is not imitation, virtue is not ethics. Virtue is creative living which comes through freedom which is in itself virtue. Virtue cannot be cultivated for that which is cultivated is not virtue. Nor does it come through practice or praying. Virtue comes through freedom and freedom comes through understanding. Maturity does not come with age, maturity comes with understanding. There can only be understanding when we seek our ideal. There can only be understanding when we ardently inquire. When we fail to inquire ardently we are old even if we are young in years. The wise do not think in terms of division, but the immature, the foolish, are caught up in social, political and religious divisions of man. Those who become conscious of this division and know it to be false and stupid discard it from the mind heart. We must perceive the misery and humiliation that is caused through this division in our material world, caused by greed and ignorance that creates a world torn with strife and separation. This perception should make us aware that neither through time, prayers or good deeds can we free the world, which is ourselves. From the misery we create, our good deeds and prayers are but a form of aggrandizement for self-satisfaction to cover up our inner poverty which can never be satisfied with prayer and good deeds while we maintain in our mind heart the cause of world misery. We look to books to free us, but from them we merely get ideas, because many who write books on truth have themselves merely ideas about truth, but an idea of truth is not truth. The truth is the everlasting reality of our livingness and can only lie understood in the fullness of the present, discerning everything that is false. Then we will know that we are now, not merely that something we are trying to become in the distant future which is but a passing fantasy. When we separate the saint from the sinner we become hypocrites because our division remains. If inspiration is drawn from another it breeds dependence and fear. And it prevents understanding and puts an end to communion with reality. In Matthew 23, 8-10, Jesus tells his disciples, But you are not to be called rabbi. For one is your teacher, and you are all brothers. You are not to call anyone father on earth. For one is your heavenly Father. Nor must you be called leaders for one is your leader, even the Christ. Jesus said this to his disciples after he had taken the scribes and Pharisees to task for posing as teachers of men. The mind that is forced to conform becomes impliable and thus the whole of our society is based upon compulsion. Through compulsion there can be no understanding however subtle that compulsion may be. Wisdom creates confidence and extraordinary pliability of mind and this is not for the exclusive view. All can acquire it through understanding what conformity is, through understanding what tradition is, and through deep inquiry, which leads to love and affection. What is necessary is to keep the mind heart free so that love and wisdom manifest without hindrance. When you love someone there is neither high nor low, there is no difference, there is just love and affection. This extraordinary flame is free from opinion, free from tradition, free from conformity. It itself is the extraordinary flame and in itself is its own ever-present eternity. Love is not a memory or an idea, it is not a concept, but a living expression of itself. The real. If in your mind heart there are inherited theories of high and low, right and wrong, if your mind heart is filled with religious theories to which you must conform, then there is no room for love and wisdom. The world today is suffering from chills, fevers, pains, panics and booms, wars and rumors of wars, the world has a temperature, 
it is up and down like the waves of the sea. What is wrong with the world is that which is wrong with man himself. For he is the world. We must go to the mountaintop and view things from above. By our insight, our divine reason, we will see our mistakes. We will see that man himself is the cause of world chills, panics, booms and wars, etc. All our conferences end in not because we have not discovered the cause within ourselves. Then the way will no longer be clouded in mist, for the creative power will manifest its own divine nature when man understands himself and realizes that God, man and the universe are one. Here lies the spirit of power, the creative power in man. He who has ears to hear let him hear. The prophet Isaiah says, Is not wisdom calling, knowledge raising her voice? On the high ground and by the roadside on the streets she takes her stand. By the gateways opening to the city, at the entries, she is crying out. O oh men! I am calling to you, my appeal is to all men. O oh heedless souls, learn insight, O oh foolish folk, learn sense. Listen, I have a mighty message, my lips open with right words. I utter what is true, false lips I loathe, all I say is honest, and nothing is false and wrong. It is all plain to a man of sense and true for those who are intelligent. Choose instruction rather than silver and knowledge rather than rare gold. For wisdom is better than riches, no treasure is equal to her. Benediction O Divine Mother, we are all thy children and each one is my brother and sister. Teach me to love my brothers and sisters as thou lovest all. Teach me to serve others as thou dost serve all. Then I will find my happiness in the joy that thou hast in thy love. O Divine Mother of mine!